Alright guys, my name is the Meta Goblin, and today I'm going to be counting down the top 10 lore weapons in classic Wood Warcraft. Each of these weapons on this list has a little bit of a story behind it. Sometimes they have a very significant role in the lore and the timeline of the game in its entirety because they are very closely linked to an important character. And others I just put them on because they're a little bit interesting. Nonetheless, these items are obtainable by players in the game. So, let me know guys if you want to see a video like this for each each expansion uh, upcoming in the upcoming weeks in the, you know, in the comment section. And please do give me a quick follow on Twitch because when the game comes out, I will hopefully be streaming a lot more on Twitch. So to begin this list, we have Ash Candy, Great Sword of the Brotherhood, a two-handed sword that drops from Nefarian in the Blackwing Lair. Now if you look closely at the tooltip of this weapon, the flavour text states the initials AL are etched into the hilt. Okay, and most people generally believe that this weapon once belonged to Anduin Lothar, once the supreme commander of the Alliance armies. This is a character you do actually get to see in a Warcraft film as well, so that's a cool thing. Eventually he was killed by Ogrim Doomhammer and his weapon was destroyed by the legendary hammer itself, the Doomhammer. There actually is a statue of Lothar in the Blackrock Depths, well, sorry, in the um, Burning Steps, as a memorial of where he actually fell in battle. The term Great Sword of the Brotherhood, right, in the title is likely a reference to the Brotherhood of the Horse, which is the official name of the Knights of Stormwind before the First War. So you've, you're probably thinking, you know, why does the, the sword of a Stormwind commander look all evil and have a dragon on the hilt. Okay, my theory is that this weapon was received, well, this weapon was recovered by the Horde, the Dark Horde specifically, and eventually reforged by them, or Nefarian himself, as it does drop from him, until the weapon that it is today. For number two, we have the Ravencrest's Legacy, which is a quest reward along the quest line for the AQ Gates opening event. It is believed that this weapon once belonged to Ravencrest himself, a very important character in the Night Elf lore since he was the master of Black Rook Hold and the first leader of a Keldari resistance during the War of the Ancients. The War of the, of the Ancients itself was a very significant battle um, in the lore of the game. It took place thousands of years ago before the, the War of Warcraft is actually set and it actually split the continents into pieces as we know them today. Ravencrest makes a small appearance in the in the Legion expansion since Gul'dan, well, Gul'dan unintentionally resurrected the spirits of Black Rook Hold when he was um, stealing the soul of Illidan. The next weapon we have is Iron Foe, which is a very rare drop from Emperor Dagran Forissian, the last boss of Blackrock Depths. Iron Foe is a legendary orc slaying hammer twinned with Ironfell which you can also obtain in the game, however you can't actually use it as a weapon, it's just part of the Shadowforge key quest chain. The weapon was forged by Fal... these names man... Fran... Fran Clon Forge Right, and given to Marshall Windsor, but Marshall Windsor was eventually captured by the Dark Iron Dwarves and held in a prison cell, then Emperor Dagran stored a weapon for himself. Marshall Windsor is actually an NPC in the game, and is actually involved in the Alliance Anixia Achievement questline. For number 4 we have a Rock Delar, which is an epic quality hunter bow obtained from a very difficult questline which starts in Felwood. Felwood was once much like Ashenvale before the war of the um, well, the war between the Night Elves and the Burdening Legion, this is the second big one, corrupted the land and the questline basically involves the hunter going into the world to get revenge on the Burning Legion, right, for corrupting Felwood. And um and basically get rewarded one of the best ranged weapons in the game until about ooh, one of the crossbows from Nax Ramus. And if you look closely at the bow guys, the bow is actually alive and it's sprouting flowers, so it's like a living entity, a living force in in this weapon. For number 5 we have an all time favourite, the Corrupted Ashbringer, which is a weapon obtained from the Four Horsemen fight in the original Nax Ramus. The Ashbringer was first wielded by Alexandros Mograine, but his son killed him and Kelfazad resurrected him well, and then that's when the Ashbringer became corrupted. After Alexandros' second death, his sword, well his son Daria Morgrain used the sword to kill himself, which is how he became a Death Knight and the High Lord of Acarus. The weapon had a number of gimmicks, first it reduced your stamina, which was very strange, it would randomly play creepy sound files whenever the player wielded it, that only the player could hear, it's basically the sword whispering to the player. And uh, free, it would trigger a unique scripted event in the Scarlet Monastery. 
For number six, we have Atish Grand Staff of the Guardian, which was obtained by a long quest chain in the original Nax Ramus. Atish is a staff that belongs to the Guardians of Tristfall, an ancient order initiated thousands of years ago to secretly fight the forces of the Burning Legion whenever they were a threat to Azeroth. It is passed down by each Guardian, the most notable in the lore being Medivh, who covertly influences many different events leading to the beginning of when World of Warcraft is actually set. After Medivh's assassination, the staff was protected in Dalaran, but during the destru destruction of Dalaran by the hands of Archimonde, the staff basically used its last defence mechanism to shatter it into 40 different pieces. Then Bran, Bran's Bond, Bron, oh my god, I can't say his name, it's sort of, such a tongue twister. Bran Bronzebeard obtained a base of a staff, but lost it to Cthulhu. Uh, somehow, while the Scourge captured the other 40 splinters, since Kelphasad actually wanted the staff for himself. This is why you have to go and kill many bosses in Naxxramas in order to get the staff for yourself. Interestingly, this staff grants the, basically the, anyone who uses it the ability to teleport to Karazhan, which is something I always thought really strange because Karazhan was a TBC instance, right? and there was no TBC, well there was no Karazhan in, in vanilla. However, it was planned that Karazhan was going to be released during vanilla, and it was actually the original, an alternative uh, vanilla version of Karazhan, so it probably would have been a, the next patch of content after Naxxramas before they decided of a concept of an expansion pack. They, you would have been able to like teleport to the next raid, that's my theory anyway. For number 7 we have Quell Sarah, which is an epic one-handed tanking sword obtained for a questline in Dire Maul. The sword was forged long ago by dragons and gifted to the Highborn, which just means... Basically, Highborn is just a term given to Night Elves of Royal Blood. Diamol was once called... A very difficult word I'm going to attempt to pronounce. Eldry Falas, the capital kingdom of Queen Ajara's followers. Interestingly, the next patch in retail is all about Queen Ajara. A, a patch 8.2, anyway. So, the weapon was protected by the Shendalar, a faction who kind of remained hidden with Diamol long ago after, you know, Queen Ajara left and became a Naga and all that kind of thing. Eventually this faction becomes friendly with the Night Elves again, and they pass on their knowledge of the, well, pass their knowledge of the Arcanum being a mage to the Night Elves, and this is essentially how Night Elves can become mages in Cataclysm. It's important to note that there are actually a number of weapons with a very similar name to Quell Saravas, Quell de La, which is something that's obtained through another long quest line in the Raffle Lich King expansion. It's a fairly similar elf looking kind of weapon and it really kind of looks like it's been forged by dragons for the sole purpose of, well, killing the Burning Legion. For number 8 we have the Fang of Corialstras, which is a quest reward from the same quest as uh, the Legacy of Ravencrest. The weapon itself doesn't have much of a story, but the character Corialstras does. He is a member of the Ruby Dragonflight who appears as a High Elven Mage called Crassus, who can be seen in the game on top of the Wormrest Temple, once a mighty titan city, but now a meeting point for all of the Dragonflights. Crassus was there during the War of the Ancients and the restoration of a Sunwell, and he fell to his death trying to protect the eggs of the Ruby Dragonflight in the Ruby Sanctum instance. Ruby Sanctum Dun uh, raid is actually quite an interesting raid. It's a very unique one because it came out after the last raid. It's the first time it's ever happened in a, in a in World of Warcraft, so just thought I'd throw that fact in there. For number 9 we have the Might of Menethil. So when I first saw this weapon, I presumed this would be Arthur's Menethil's weapon, but Arthur's wielded Light's Vengeance throughout the story until he discarded it, okay? So my theory behind this weapon is that the Might of Menethil is a corrupted version of Light's Vengeance, much like Corrupted Ashbringer and all that kind of thing. As a, you know, they're both two-handed maces and they kind of have, well, they don't look the same, but you know what I mean. And uh, obviously during the Shadowmon questline in Wrath of the Lich King, you can go and obtain Light's Vengeance in a cave. So, I think it's one of those instances where something has been rewritten in the lore. Originally, this was Arthas' old weapon, but they rewrote the lore a little bit so that you can get Arthas' weapon later on and in the Shadowmon questline. Um, but anyway, I think you probably know who Arthas is, I don't need to go into his storyline. So the last item is much of a lore item itself, because it's more of a just a placeholder kind of thing that's been put into the game. But I think it's a cool item nonetheless to add to the list, and that is Saffron's Left Eye, which is an offhand item dropped from Saffron. Saffron wasn't always unde undead, he was once a member of the Blue Dragonflight and a servant of Maligos, who resided in Northrend guarding a treasure hoard, which is a very 
Tolkien-esque interpretation of a dragon, you know, because he's guarding treasure, much like Smog does in The Hobbit. He was killed by Arthas in during the Frozen, Fo Frozen Throne expansion pack for, uh, for Warcraft 3, and then resurrected to defend Kelfazad in the halls of Naxxramas. Anyway guys, that's where I'm going to end the video there. This is just a list of interesting weapons that I found in the game, which are obtainable by players and also have a little bit of a story behind them, or they're just kind of reference or are directly linked to an interesting character in the lore. So, that's where I'm going to end the video. As I just said, my name is Medigoblin, and until my next video, ciao.